The wealthy should pay their fair share. Yes, wealthy okay, should pay their fair share. What is a fair share? What percentage? So you're saying that 40, you're, you're saying that they're paying their fair share is what you're saying. No, I'm asking what percentage is a fair share? Their fair share, the same, if I'm paying, if a third of my money is going to taxes, then I think a third of their money should be going it to does. taxes. It does. Well, it does. I'm trying to understand it, because you realize the ta effective tax rate on the poor is less than it is on the rich, right? Okay, so first of all, um, I'm not the poor. I'm very close to that line, but I'm not the poor. Okay, so the effective, tax rate on the, the effective tax rate on the middle class okay. is less than it is on the rich, correct? What fair share would you like to change the tax rate to on the wealthiest what percentage of Americans so it's a fair share? So let's say the wealthy 1% could pay Let's say if they paid, let's just give them 45%. A big election day is just about nine weeks away. The Missouri primary is scheduled for August 6th, and that is when St. Louis voters could decide who to send to Congress. St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell is challenging incumbent Cory Bush. KSDK, the local PBS station, and the St. Louis American have invited both campaigns to debate. So far, we've only heard back from Bill. Do you believe the voters of St. Louis deserve a chance to hear you and Wesley Bell debate? Um, so my team has repeatedly said that we will talk about that. We'll look further into it as we get closer to, um, to the actual primary election. So you're not committing to debate Wesley Bell at this time? Uh, I just gave my answer. <laughs> Black people, the insurrection, racism, black people, the insurrection, racism. All right, guys, so just a few days ago, we talked about a woke progressive squad member insurrections Democrat, Jamal Bowman, who probably is headed towards a landslide crushing defeat in his Democrat primary election now this election is coming up in a couple of weeks and it seems as if we're going to have one less race hustler in congress at the very least in fact it seems as if we could have more because the squad is on the chopping block like i told you guys during that video and we got to talk about the other squad member cory bush whose primary is also coming up i think hers is a little bit later i think in august but it looks as if she's probably going to get crushed as well too okay she is probably going to be up out of there uh after that primary election because i think that america is moving on and beyond these race hustlers who quite honestly are just one trick ponies okay they go to congress they don't accomplish anything they don't do anything they just cause a bunch of chaos and destruction right and again that is cory bush's specialty because all she does in congress is boo hoo on and cry about white supremacy all day okay white supremacy and she makes up stories about being a victim of white supremacy, okay? I think she said that she was a victim of police brutality or something like that. Uh, she told some story that was never proven to be true, right? Nobody saw it. Nobody witnessed it. But this is what she claims, okay? And she's just not as popular as the internet would suggest, even in her own district. Like, for example, uh, Cori Bush, uh, almost a couple years ago, put out a book that sold just 729 copies in the first week probably about a thousand in two weeks now this is disastrous considering how at the time this woman was paraded around on mainstream liberal media news to promote her book that nobody would read okay now we know for a fact fast forward two years later uh that nobody read her book <laughs> because uh it is now just coming out that Cori Bush claimed that she performed miracles, including, but not limited to, curing tumors, okay? So apparently, uh, Cori Bush <laughs> uh, can perform miracles as if she has been granted some type of divine power, according to her. Now, again, this is just coming out literally because nobody read her book, right? So nobody knew she was making these claims. Like, if, even the people that bought the book didn't open up the book, okay, to actually read it. So, again, no, nobody actually questioned this woman, a sitting congresswoman, claiming that, yeah, 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 I, I can cure cancer and do all types of stuff that, you know, hey, I think 
you know, deserves some scrutiny, right? People should be asking questions about, okay, do you really have this power, right? Why are you making these claims at a, as a sitting congresswoman, right? Are these claims true? Now, she was asked one time about these claims uh, by the mainstream liberal media, and this was her response. You're a pastor. Yes. You write about healing through faith. At one point, you came across a woman with, quote, several visible tumors on her torso. Tell me what happened. Um, so at that time, I, along with um, a group of friends, we would go out on the street and just meet with people and pray with people and offer them food. And this lady came to us and she had these tumors. I mean, she wanted us to like feel them. And um, I just remember I put my hand on her um, and my hand just began to move. And uh, the lumps that were there were no longer there. And she was so happy and she like went on about her day. And I never saw her again. So you think the tumors disappeared? I do, I do. And this woman was unhoused. She's someone who, you know, had been sleeping in the shelters and sleeping on the street. If, if I can speak a prayer mm -hmm. and I can believe what, what I believe and you believe that this will help you, then why not offer that to people? Because I know prayer has helped me. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that. Now, I don't want people to get it twisted. I don't have any problem with Cori Bush uh, having faith, okay, and her religious beliefs, or even speaking about her religious beliefs, right? But it's one thing to express your faith uh, as a sitting congresswoman, and it's another to claim that you performed medical miracles because of your faith as you are running for office, right? You are in Congress, and you're saying that, yeah, I performed miracles, okay? Now, again, I don't doubt the power of prayer. I don't doubt the power of faith. Um, however, I think that, again, when you are a sitting congresswoman, um, you know, I just know that if she was a Republican and a Republican came out and made these types of claims, uh, the Republican would be ridiculed and humiliated by the mainstream liberal media, right? They would be saying that the Republican is a nut job, that they are a Christian nationalist, that um, they believe in voodoo and all types of stuff. This is what they be saying. Okay. But when Cori Bush comes out and makes these types of claims, even though, again, I, I don't think there's any proof of evidence, uh, that Cori Bush actually performed these miracles that she claims <laughs> that she performed in her book. Um, you know, they don't really have any questions. Okay. Because again, some of these stories are, you know, again, just fascinating to say the least. Okay. Let's read here. Bush relayed a story of a toddler she met doing a prayer service in St. Louis. Quote, the child had had a bleed in her brain shortly after she was born and couldn't walk. She had never uh, taken a step in her life. Bush recall, I carried the child from the prayer room in the back of the church into the sanctuary. Walk. I said gently to the three-year-old girl, you will walk. And this girl took her first step, then another and another. She walked. <laughs> Again, all I'm saying is that if a Republican was to come out and to make these types of claims, being a sitting person in Congress, how do you think that the mainstream liberal media would react? Now, again, you know, in Cori Bush's case, she is so unpopular. Nobody actually really cares about her so much that nobody read her book. So nobody knew that she was making these types of claims. But now that they're out here, okay, I think we need to be asking questions about, hey, did this really happen, right? Is this something that actually really happened? Like, what's going on here? Because you are a sitting member of Congress. You're currently running for re-election, and we have precedents to suggest that if you are making these claims and they're not true, and you're running for re-election, again, you are selling your book, which, again, is a part of your campaign strategy to get re-elected is to sell a book uh, while making these false claims. You should be kicked out of Congress. I mean, that's what happened to George Santos, right? He got kicked out of Congress for running on false claims. I'm not entirely sure what's so different about this and George Santos, okay? This woman is essentially claiming to have divine powers that can medically heal people. Now, again, I hope that all these people that Cori Bush 
healed. I hope they go seek medical attention, right? Go seek medical medical attention from a doctor. Okay, I don't know if those tumors went away, uh, like Cory Bush claims, but you know, hey, regardless, Cory Bush has faced a whole lot of backlash here lately uh, because she is under DOJ investigation for misuse of campaign funds. And of course, she blames it on right-wing organizations, even though the DOJ is ran by Democrats. But again, it's right-wing organizations fault that she basically got busted funneling campaign cash to her uh, security guard who later became her husband. In recent months, right-wing Organizations have lodged baseless complaints against me, peddling notions that I have misused campaign funds to pay for personal security services. That simply is not true. I have complied with all applicable, law, applicable laws and house rules and will continue to prioritize the rules that govern us as federal elected officials. In particular, the nature of these allegations have been around my husband's role on the campaign in accordance with all applicable uh, rules, I retained my husband as part of my security team to provide security services because he has had extensive experience in this area and is able to provide the necessary services at or, uh, or below fair market rate. These frivolous complaints have resulted in a number of investigations, some of which are still ongoing. The Federal Election Commission and the House Committee on Ethics are currently reviewing the matter, as is the Department of Justice. Yeah, so not only that, Again, like I told you guys, um, Cori Bush is facing a monstrous primary challenge, okay? She's being challenged uh, by Wesley Bell in her district, and there was a poll showing that Cori Bush is losing by 22 points. She's getting absolutely crushed, which is the same thing that's happening to Jamal Bowman, right? I mean, the exact same thing is happening. They're both getting crushed by their primary opponents. Now... What does Cori Bush do in response to uh, this primary challenge in which she's getting crushed? Well, she comes out here and, of course, blames white supremacy, right? It's about white supremacy, not anti-Semitism, right? Which is uh, the argument that, that she makes in response to being called an anti-Semite for her anti-Israel uh, stances. Lewis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell is winning the race to raise money in his bid against Congresswoman Cori Bush. The incumbent Democrat has opposed Israel's war against Hamas, and now donors are lining up behind Bell. Our political editor Mark Maxwell is in the newsroom with more on this. Big money from some big names is pouring into campaign coffers here in St. Louis as Wesley Bell and Cori Bush prepare for the final 100-day stretch in this contentious primary. The race is already exposing some deep dividing lines in the Democratic Party. When she officially launched her campaign for a third term, I need y'all to make it clear that they're trying to buy this seat. Congresswoman Cori Bush called out a group trying to defeat her. It's called APAC. New campaign filings with the Federal Election Commission show APAC's Super PAC funneled $4.1 million to congressional candidates last month, including $387,000 to Wesley Bell's campaign. The contributions boosted Bell's campaign war chest up to $1.7 million in total donations, with $1.1 million left to spend. Bush tried to paint APAC and its campaign operations as partisan. Those groups take money from mostly Republicans. But spending records show 63% of its money goes to Democrats. Are there any groups of people that you would decline a campaign contribution from? You know, we would have to take that on a case by case. Since this December interview, Bell has reported contributions from St. Louis billionaire David Stewart from Worldwide Technologies, hedge fund billionaire Daniel Loeb, and LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman, a major Biden donor who also helped fund Nikki Haley's primary campaign against Donald Trump. This is the sandbox that we play in. We have to raise money. Prolific donors to Bush's campaign includes the Squad Victory Fund, Progressive Voices for Peace, and NBA star Kyrie Irving, who was suspended by the Brooklyn Nets two years ago for failure to disavow anti-Semitism, a topic Bush addressed in January. You heard the progressive Jews of St. Louis up here. They understand my congresswoman is not anti-Semitic. This is not about anti-Semitism. This is not about whether I hate Jewish people or not, because I absolutely don't. What it is about is white supremacy. Bush's team calls Wesley Bell a Trojan horse, in their words, working to, quote, sell out St. Louis. 
We've learned that Wesley Bell's campaign has reached out to try and begin conversations about arranging a debate between the two. No indication from Cori Bush's team that she'll agree to one. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that. Okay, now, you know, I just find it to be pretty hilarious that Cori Bush here, who has made a name for herself in Congress, boohoo whining and crying about white supremacy, calling anybody who disagrees with her a white supremacist, she's on track to lose her job because she's being called an anti-Semite or her views are being labeled as anti-Semitic because she is not pro Israel okay or maybe she's anti-Israel according to some people right this is what they say but I just find it to be funny right it, it really is it's almost as if like karma is like legitimately a real thing in the sense that what comes around goes around when you weaponize the race card and spam it and abuse it like she has like Jamal Bowman has as well too um yeah that tends to come back around and affect you because again she's being hit with the anti-Semitism card that is probably the reason why she is getting a primary challenge is not like she's not woke enough right she agrees with democrats on everything except israel right uh and because of that uh, i think that is why she's getting this primary challenge and this is why she's getting blown out right they're gonna pump so much money into that race that she's most certainly gonna lose just like jamal bowman is gonna lose and we'll have two less race hustlers in congress and again what's hilarious about this is that maybe just maybe this would not have happened had these individuals not weaponized the bigotry and victimhood card the way that they have in order to make a career, okay? It's like the old saying goes, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, right? In this case, you live by the woke sword, you die by the woke sword, right? That seems to be what's happening to the campaigns uh, and the careers of uh, certain race hustlers in Congress. Um, you know, they played the victimhood card a little bit too much and it got played against them and now they're going to lose their seats because of it, right? I'm pretty certain that Jamal Bowman is going to lose. And I'm pretty certain that Cory Bush is going to lose. And at the end of the day, um, you know, I can only say that I am happy that we'll have two less race hustlers in Congress, so it seems. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.